This video is going to be an introduction to SketchUp. I'm using SketchUp Pro 2021, and we'll be looking spe specifically at drawing forms and then extruding them to make uh, volumes out of them. I'm going to open a template, the Architectural Inches template in SketchUp, and I'm going to select this scale figure and delete. I'm going to close down my trays, which are like my palettes for SketchUp, and in fact, I'm going to close them entirely for this video. If I look in my default scene, I can middle mouse button orbit around the scene and I see my origin of Cartesian space with my X, Y, Z, R, G, B axes. So red for X, uh, green for Y, blue for Z. And the solid lines are in the positive direction. The dashed lines are in the negative direction. So conceptually, I'm going to be modeling from this point out in the positive. Um, not necessary that I restrict myself to the positive, but it comes from a habit of modeling centered around the origin and, and kind of generally in positive space. If I hold down my shift key and middle mouse button, I can pan and scroll wheel zooms me in and out. So these are all ways that I can navigate around my scene. In order to draw lines to begin to make shapes in SketchUp, I can use my line tool. And I have a drop down here. I have line and freehand. I can also, under my tools, uh, excuse me, under my draw, I can draw, access those same commands here. I can draw arcs. I can draw certain shapes. Um, but let's, for now, just use this line command. When I bring my cursor close to the origin, you'll notice that SketchUp is snapping me there, or if I bring it close to an axis, it is going to snap to that axis. And this is the inference engine in SketchUp doing a um, remarkable job of anticipating where it thinks I want to be placing an object and putting itself in between to help accurately locate it. So if I'm drawing near the origin, it is going to want to allow me to draw very precisely at the origin, likewise on any one of these axes. So let me click here at the origin. And as I drag or simply move my cursor, I'm not dragging, I have no mouse keys down. But as I drag my cursor, I can see that a line is being projected in the direction of my cursor. And when I get close to an axis, it is going to project me along that axis. If I want to move in a certain direction, let's say I want to move in my x-axis and draw 10 feet in this direction, I can either look at the lower right corner of my screen where the length of my line is being shown. And if I were able to click at 10 feet, I could draw initially a 10 foot line, or I can simply click in the direction that I want to be going. So let's say out here along the x-axis. And now if I type in, 10 feet, it is going to restrict the line that was drawn to 10 feet from that location. And now from there, I'm going to click to start another line and let's draw this way. But in this, in this time, instead of clicking, I'm going to type in 10 feet, enter. And again, it snaps me to 10 feet. So those are two different ways. I can either move in a general direction, let's say that direction and type 10 feet, enter, or I can move and type 10 feet, enter after my, my draw. So two ways of making a 10 foot uh, square. And what we see now is not only do I have a 10 foot square made out of four line segments, but it has shaded in that square. And it has inferred that I want a solid shape since I am in this modeler called SketchUp, that I want something that has solidity. So it has filled in that shape. If I click on the fill, I can select that. If I click on any one of the edges, I can select those. And if I double click, I'm going to select all of it. So if I wanted to erase this entirely, I could double click and it selects both the fill and the lines. If I wanted to get rid of, let's say, just the fill, I could select that and erase or any line segment and erase. If I want to give this volume, because currently it has no volume, it is flat on the ground, I will use my command called push pull. And I'll do that by selecting my fill, and under push-pull, I'm going to click and drag in a direction. It is going to infer, using the inference engine, which direction I'm trying to extrude in. And that's also based largely on the normals or direction of my surface. So I have a 10-foot 
square, let's say I want to move up two feet. Again, in the lower right corner, I'm seeing a dimension, a distance, so I could conceivably lock that at two feet, but it's very challenging to be accurate. So rather, I'm going to overshoot and immediately type in two feet, enter, that is placed into the distance, and now I have um, a two foot tall by 10 foot by 10 foot piece of geometry. I could extrude further from any one of these surfaces. I could extrude, let's say, this direction one foot. I could extrude back four feet, and notice what a good job SketchUp is doing of healing my geometry, making it a single large block of geometry. Perhaps I want to subdivide some edge. I can go back to my drawing line and draw in any particular location. Let's snap to my midpoint. Again, that inference engine is thinking it wants me to be able to be accurate. And so if I click from midpoint to midpoint, I've now drawn and subdivided this edge. I could use push-pull and let's say come out two feet here. I could subdivide again midpoint by midpoint, maybe midpoint by midpoint, and select this piece and extrude out 10 feet. And in this way, I can begin to build some very particular geometry. If I wanted to get rid of this edge here, I could use my eraser tool to get rid of that line. And now I have a very kind of clean and consistent piece of geometry. I could continue to subdivide and push-pull as I needed. And if I were to click and pull back, notice I can snap very easily to an adjacent face. That has gotten rid of that push-pull extrusion and returned me back to the flat piece of geometry. So that, again, is the very basics of using my line tool and my push-pull to manifest simple geometry in SketchUp Pro 2021.